In this video, I'm going to give you the ultimate guide on how to actually make money in crypto because most people don't and I don't want you to be one of them. I've taken the knowledge that I've gained through multiple cycles in this space ever since 2017 and instilled this into a simple guide with some basic principles that you can use to actually turn a profit. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And while I've personally been a crypto holder for many years myself, the best way to make it in this space is to become a blockchain developer, and I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. So first and foremost, I don't warrant anything I'm saying in this video is to be financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any specific cryptocurrencies based on this information. These are just some principles that have worked for me to actually make money in this space with crypto. But the first fundamental rule that you have to understand with crypto is you have to buy low and sell high. But that's the opposite of what most people do. They look at a chart like this where they see price going up like crazy, and then they buy somewhere like right here. But then what happens next? The price goes down and it goes down and it goes down and they sell somewhere around here. And one of the big reasons for this is just panic selling. So the first thing I really want to talk about when you're going to make it in crypto is managing your own emotions because crypto is a game of emotions. Trust me. And you have to have a system to manage that because the prices are going to go up and down like crazy. Nothing goes up in a straight line. And so there's some simple rules that you can do to help manage these types of emotions. So what are they? So rule number one is do not invest any more than you can afford to lose into crypto. One of the biggest reasons people get scared when they buy crypto and then they sell really quickly when the price goes down is because they put way too much in. So they think when the price goes down, like, how am I going to pay my rent? So if you're using rent money to invest in crypto, then that's your first mistake. Because it's really easy to look at the crypto markets and think, I'm just going to put 100% of my liquid net worth into this asset class and then just watch it go parabolic, you know, in maybe the coming months and years and just perfectly sell the top. But honestly, you're probably not going to be able to stomach that volatility and you're not going to sell when it's the right time. So what I've personally done is put a much smaller percentage in and then let that boost the overall returns. Because think about it this way. If you put 10% of your liquid assets into crypto and then that appreciated in value by 10x and you actually booked those profits, then 10xing 10% doubles what you have. And that's an insane result. And also losing 10% is not a devastating outcome. So another way to manage your emotions in crypto is to avoid FOMO or fear of missing out. So basically, you know, if you look at a chart like this, it's really easy to say, oh man, the price has gone up so much. And then you start buying right here because you're afraid it's going to keep going higher. But typically what happens is a lot of other people feel that way. And then the price does this. And you do what I said before, you panic sell only to watch the price rebound here where you could have gotten out at a higher level. And so how do you avoid you know, FOMO? Well, it's the old adage of being fearful when others are greedy and greedy is when others are fearful. So basically, if you feel like you know, you're know you just scared to miss out, lots of other people probably feel that way too. And that probably means the price is going to go down soon. And when it does, you can actually buy when other people are scared, assuming that the trend is going higher. And you get a much better entry and you'll actually be in profit. And another way to manage your emotions in crypto is go ahead and back off your expectations, okay? It's really easy to look at a historical price chart like this of Bitcoin and say, man, if I just bought here and then sold here, you know, I'd have had some insane, like, you know, 50x return, but you're probably not going to find the top of the market. Okay. I'll talk about taking profits here in a second, but go ahead and erase that from your mind. You're not going to find the perfect top. You're not going to sell it and then just sit back and cash out. And so for that reason, like if you have this 50x number in your head, you should probably go ahead and back down those expectations. So, I mean, what if you just, you know, did a 5X off of something? That's a pretty insane result. And if you actually booked those profits and walked away, like it's really hard to find a 5X return on investment in any other asset class outside of crypto. And when you start to see those parabolic runs, like taking some profit off the table is rarely a bad idea. All right, so now let's get into some principles of buying and selling, okay? So one pretty easy way to temper your emotions and make things a little easier is to do what's called dollar cost averaging. So if you don't know what that means, it basically means take however much money that you're actually going to spend on a cryptocurrency and break it up into smaller chunks and invest that over time, okay? Because the price is very volatile, it goes up and down, and then you can sort of calculate your average buy-in price, and that will be what your actual you know, investment is that can, that can take off. So let me explain why this is so important. So basically, like, let's say that you were going to invest you know, $1,000 into uh, crypto, okay? And then you did it right here because you felt FOMO. Well, then the price goes around and does this, and you're down you know, 50%. 
well, then you might panic sell. But if you, you know, you started here with FOMO and then said, okay, I'm gonna buy some and then does this and it goes down and let's say you bought this dip, but then it does that. And then you buy some here, you buy some here, you buy some here. Well, by the time you get to here, okay, you'll have way more and you'll be in the black and you'll resist the temptation to panic sell because you'll start to see a recovery much sooner before you book these nice profits. And so that's kind of how dollar cost averaging works. Now, a couple other things I'm gonna talk about during the buying phase is, you know, basically number one erase your expectations that you're ever going to perfectly buy the bottom of the market okay some people do but vast majority of people don't and honestly the better risk reward scenario is to watch for a thing that's in a range or accumulating with some buying volume and then you can employ that dollar cost average strategy to get a good average entry and then watch it trend up over time and part of that is the aspect of being greedy when others are fearful so when something's in a range or it's in an upward trend and you buy those dips in that range or in that upward trend, that's how you can get good dollar cost average entrance and then watch the price go up and you'll be in profit much faster. All right, so now let's talk about actually selling your crypto because at the end of the day, you know, unless you just plan to hold the crypto for a very long time, which that's okay, but if you're trying to actually get some cash profits off the table, you actually have to take profits at some point. So how do you do that? Well, again, you want to avoid the temptation to think that you're perfectly going to time the top. Or go ahead and erase that assumption from your uh, thinking, and you can employ the dollar cost average strategy that I talked about for accumulating cryptos to also selling. So instead of just like finding the top and clicking sell and selling everything and getting that maximum return, you basically are looking for parabolic moves in the space and then selling around periods of those parabolic activity. So for example, if you had a dollar cost average way down here, and then you see this parabolic move, well, you could you could sell some right here, okay? And then if it keeps going, you sell a little more, all right, and then if the parabola breaks and you're actually on the way down, you can continue to allow cash average out. And maybe you leave some in for the long term. And if it ticks, picks back up again, you can start to employ that same strategy until the price, you know, you either completely erase your position or you just take whatever profits you want to in the short term off the table. Now, some other principles for selling are listening to your own emotions. You know, at the beginning of this video, I talked about you need to manage your emotions, but you should also listen to them. So a pretty good general rule of thumb is, if you feel scared, you know, and you feel or fear of fear of missing out, that's typically an indicator. But if you also feel euphoria, okay, like, oh my gosh, I've made so much money. Everyone around me is making so much money. then that might be a time to start thinking about taking a little bit of money off the table. So talking about being greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. If you are feeling all this greed and other people are feeling all this greed, that might be a time to reduce your exposure. There's all kinds of indicators you can look at with this. You can look what people are saying on social media. You can also look at one of the indicators that has a nearly 100% success rate at calling market tops, which is the Coinbase uh, position inside the App Store. This is back in October of 2021, basically right before the beginning of November when the market top for crypto, you know, Coinbase regains number one position in the Apple App Store as crypto.com jumps to third. So that's an indication that everybody and their brother is trying to get in and buy crypto. And whenever that's happening, it's time to start reducing your exposure. All right, so now let's talk about actually analyzing projects and what their potential are for returns. Because some people are saying like, hey, how much return can I potentially make off these types of assets? They want to say, hey, I want to 10x my portfolio or 100x my portfolio, whatever it is. Well, you have to wonder, is that even possible? Okay. Or even in the realm of possibility. So I'm going to talk about a few traps people get into right now. So one is that they just look at the cryptocurrency price and compare it to others. Okay. They get on a website like CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko and they say, oh, Bitcoin is trading at $41,000 and you know Ethereum is trading at $2,188. So what if Ethereum goes to $41,000 just like Bitcoin. Well, that fails to take into account the market cap. So the market cap is basically like how much are all the coins worth, okay? So that's how you want to compare it. So Ethereum's market cap is, you know, $263 billion and Bitcoin's $806 billion. So that basically means that uh, Bitcoin is worth four times as much as Ethereum, not 20 times. So basically what I'm saying there is it's very unlikely that the market cap of Ethereum is going to go up by 20 times if Bitcoin is like staying at this level. So another way people get trapped up with this is they see, you know, coins like, uh, you know, Dogecoin, which is nine cents. And they're like, whoa, what if Dogecoin goes to $100? Well, it's super unlikely because Dogecoin has a market cap of $13 billion. And if it went to something crazy like, you know, $10, 
it would be a market cap of 1.3 trillion, which would be higher than Bitcoin's historical all-time market cap. It's just not going to happen. And so another reason you have to think about is, is this coin going to potentially generate these types of returns is you have to ask yourself, why would it do it in the first place? Okay, so first of all, you have to understand that crypto is highly cyclical. Okay, it goes through these explosive trends. And, you know, typically speaking, Whenever, you know, we go into a crazy trend, most ships rise with that trend, okay? But they don't all rise equally, all right? So you have to understand, like, why would certain coins go up? Well, so like Bitcoin has really strong, uh, you know, fundamentals in terms of a lot of people use the network, they hold the coins. Um, it has some value to it, okay? But there's also things like ETF down the pipeline. So there's a strong reason why people want to hold Bitcoin. So same thing for Ethereum. It's the number one smart contract platform out there. Uh, you can have staking yield from it. And for that reason, there's probably going to be a lot of people who want to hold Ethereum, this very large, you know, air quotes, safe coin. So it's a strong bet. But then when you start getting outside of that, okay, all these alternative layer ones, smaller cap altcoins, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of this stuff is highly narrative driven. Okay. And even all crypto is, is narrative driven to some degree, but you have to ask yourself, like, does this, you know, project have a strong story behind it? And is that going to be a story that resonates with other people? And so, for example, there's lots of hot narratives for, uh, you know, the 2024 coming cycle, like AI, you know, decentralized physical infrastructure, like deep end crypto gaming and things like that. So part of it is saying like, hey, does this fit into the picture of where we think the market is going to go rather than just throwing a dart at a dartboard and saying like, oh, is this coin's probably going to go up because everything else will. All right. So now let's talk about portfolio construction, because, you know, what I was saying a minute ago is, you know, if the entire trend in the crypto space is positive, then most ships are going to rise, but they're not all going to rise equally. And some may barely rise or not even rise at all. Okay. So that looks like basically spreading your risk out. All right. Now I'm not going to tell you which coins to buy and how much to wait if each blah, 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 blah. Again, I'm not giving you specific financial advice in this video, but the general principle is you don't exactly know how much every single coin is going to go up. You can guess, but the best way is to basically spread out your risk. Okay. So what that might look like is taking a coin that has a very strong bet and a very large market cap and putting like a 50% allocation in it and taking another one like that and doing like a 25% allocation and then picking two, three, four, five other small coins which you think you know could have a strong performance potential and spreading your risk across the remaining amount of your portfolio. And so another way could be basically like taking a big coin that you think is probably going to perform well and then putting in like 50%, okay? And then putting in uh, maybe an even split or whatever weightings you want to of you know, five to 10 other smaller projects. This is more of like what's called a barbell strategy. And the reasons for this are basically, again, you don't know which ones are going to be the big winners. And those, if you just get one big winner, it could make up for the underperformance of everything else. But also it reduces your risk because if one of these projects goes to zero, I mean, some of these totally can go to zero, then it doesn't nuke your entire, you know, stat. All right. So also whenever you're in the crypto space, you need to avoid excessive risk. All right. The entire crypto space is risky enough as it is. And the last thing you want to do is lose your ticket to the rocket ship as it's going to the moon. So how can you do that? Well, number one, you can avoid excessively risky behavior. So number one is leverage. So what is that? Well, basically, if you don't know what leverage is, you shouldn't be using it in the first place. And even if you know what leverage is, unless you've successfully used leverage multiple times, then you probably shouldn't even be touching it. So basically, this is uh, taking some amount of cryptocurrency and then locking it up and getting extra cryptocurrency that you're essentially, you know, collateralized and borrowing and then trading with that. So let's say you deposit 0.1 BTC and then you want to use 10x leverage to get 10 BTC where you can get the benefit of the price appreciation going up. Looks great. But the problem is if your price goes down enough, your position can get liquidated and you just lose all your money. I've seen people blow up with this stuff all the time. Same thing with shorting. They borrow the cryptocurrency so they can think the price is going to go down. Shorting has such a limited profit potential. I don't even touch it. And most people are going to get absolutely wrecked trying to call this. So generally speaking, avoiding leverage at all costs is a good principle for surviving these markets. Again, the entire trend is leveraged in and of itself. So another principle is basically dumpster diving for super risky low cap altcoin gems. Okay. I'm not saying that you can't do this, but you have to understand what the risks are. Okay. Because it's easy to have a coin with a small market cap and say, hey, what if this thing goes to a billion dollars? But you have to understand there's lots of these projects that can completely go to zero and never, ever recover. So that's a really quick way. If you put all your money in this stuff, they could all go to zero. All right. So the, the final tip for actually making money in the crypto space is you have to hold on to your coins the entire time that you possess them. 
So what I mean by that is you don't want to get hacked. You don't want your coins to go away. You don't want to keep them on an exchange that could possibly go down. Okay. So let's talk about that right now. So this is the, the topic of security. So we saw, we've seen ma massive exchanges go down like FTX. Lots of people have PTSD from that type of scenario. So if you're going to hold your coins on exchanges, it's probably best to do on something that has a very long reputation for safely storing customer funds. Uh, I'm not officially endorsing a, an exchange like Coinbase, but Coinbase has done a pretty good job. An honest actor, I believe, in the crypto space. But even if you hold coins on an exchange like Coinbase, you want to make sure that you have things like two-factor authentication turned on so that nobody can steal your password. And you definitely don't want to use your phone number as two-factor authentication because you can get SIM swapped and somebody can drain your account. So another consideration is if you decide to hold your own coins in your own wallet, again, there's the only adage of not your keys, not your crypto. And if you want to hold your private keys, then having something like a hardware wallet can really help out in that regard. Now, you want to make sure that you back up your seed phrase in a very safe manner. And I'll put a link to a video where I talk about how to do this down in the description below. All right, so that's an overview of how to actually make money in crypto. Because again, a lot of people do not make money in crypto. They either buy high and they sell low or they lose their crypto or they get blown up with leverage or they just don't manage their emotions well and they never actually exit the space with profit or take any profit off the table. So I don't want you to have to go through that and I will hope that you can use these principles that I have learned over multiple years and multiple stakes but have actually made money in this space and had a result that 99% of other people have not. So if you got value out of this video, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And while I am a multi-year crypto holder myself, you know, the best way to make it in this space is to become a blockchain developer. And I can show you to do that step-by-step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappuniversity.